Hello and welcome back to Humanizer, our free and open source 3D character creator plugin for Godot 4. So the base plugin has everything that you need to build your characters and it does have a built-in editor um, menu where you can set up the humans as you've seen but it does not include the actual in-game menu and that's because that's going to have different requirements for everyone so no two games will have exactly the same character creator anyway but I did go ahead and make this example menu um, so I'll put a link to this I put it in a separate repository so first I'll just show you all of the features that I've added and then I'll show you how to download it and set it up for yourself and you can either you can copy this menu straight if you want to or you can just use it as a reference and for ideas for your own menu so feel free to do whatever you want with it so the most important feature is the ability to once you're done making your character then you can hit the next button and this will actually save your character to a file and then load it into a test world and it does take some time right now because we haven't optimized but we're gonna write some computation shaders so now you can see our character is running around in game and you just use the arrow keys to control his movement and of course you'll want to set up a camera to follow the player around presumably but so that all works so first of all I added this zoom in and out on the character and it's centered on the character's face when you zoom all the way in and then when you zoom out this is enough for the maximum height so if you turn that up and then turn up like the leg length and torso length and everything they'll still fit in this um, area but then you can see so the character is taller and it still zooms in on his face and then if you like turn the age all the way down you can see so that's all working pretty well and you're probably already familiar with all of the settings that it can do the gender age, height, weight, muscle, proportions, and race sliders. So you can change those to adjust your character. And I also added a hair and eye tab. So here you can change the eye color using the overlay system that Matt created. And you can change the hair color. So one thing you'll notice, um, so if the hair is really dark, if the hair texture is really dark, you're not gonna be able to see the hair color changing. Um, so, and we do have a none option here, but so like the bob too has, is pretty much white and so you'll really be able to see the color when you set it. And I do plan on importing all of these as uncolored to the main plugin um, at some point, so you'll be able to use those. But, I mean, it kind of depends. So like, you can still see the color change on some of them. Anyway, uh, then we have the eyebrow selector. You can see. 
trying to find one that doesn't cover the eyes. That's fine. Um, so you can pretty much select these from the drop down and the eyelashes as well. So you can see those change. And then I have the rest of the shape keys under the details tab. So probably turn these down. I also added, um, as you can see, so you can set this number to exactly what you want it to be instead of using the slider. So that's should be helpful. Um, and then I have all of these shape keys, all of the additional shape keys under the details. And this is a sliding panel, so you can move it out. Um, yeah, so we've got head, eyes, mouth, nose, all of these additional shape keys that you can play around with. So I have already grouped the left and rights, but there's also these opposites. So like you wouldn't want to use the increase and the decrease because um, they kind of cancel each other out, but it doesn't really look natural because you're supposed to have one or the other set. So I plan on um, combining the decrease, increase, backward, forward, in, out, the pairs of opposites into a single slider. And then if it goes down past zero, it'll be the decrease, and above zero, it'll be the increase. But I have not added that quite yet. Another thing that I added is the skin color gradient. So you can take the skin from light to dark, and you can also apply a, sk a skin tone. So the further it is from white, the more it will change the skin. And that's just by setting the albedo, so it multiplies. So if white is one and black is zero, then the further from one, the more it will change, basically. But um, this does work better on the lighter skin, like the hair. So, but you can play around with that. And the skin color gradient actually changes um, not just between the Caucasian and African, but it changes as they get older and younger as well. And there are different skins for male and female. And these are just the standard skins that came with the um, Make Human system assets. It's just, I've blended them. So I'll go ahead and show you the shader. So if you want to just see how the shader works, you can make a new scene and drag in any Make Human mesh. And then under the surface material override, you'll just load the skin color shader in the root directory of the example project. So this is not actually in the humanizer project, which is why I'm showing you. Um, and this takes an array of 12 skin textures. So these are included with the make human system files. So we have young, middle-aged and old Caucasian male, young, middle-aged, old Caucasian female, and then African male and African female. So, um, and then I have a corresponding array of 12 ratios. So these just have to add up to one for it to look right. So if I change the 
So if we set this like halfway between the Caucasian and African female, so you can see it makes it darker. And so that's pretty much um, the shader is relatively simple. You just loop over and multiply the skin color by the ratio for each texture. So calculating these ratios is actually done in the script. So then in the character menu, I have a get skin color ratios function and so basically I just make arrays and multiply them for the gender, age, and skin color subsets and using this I make sure it all adds up to one so it's sort of like a matrix calculation I think um, but you can go ahead and look at this and so I'm just overriding the material on the human node from the humanizer and before you save or bake you will have to turn the shader material into a standard material for now so we might support custom shaders but it would be easier if you just turn it into a flat image before saving it so that's what this does it just applies it to an actual image and sets the material to a standard material with the albedo and you'll want to set the normals as well probably so that's how all that works so that's pretty much all the features and i did want to say a quick thank you to our supporters on patreon so terence Artigas, Alexander, Gregory, and Bert. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it, and it helps us continue working on our free and open source plugins. So I'll put a link to the Patreon in the description if you would like to donate. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.